Explosions like the situation that happened in Kaduna that claimed the lives of more than 150 people, sadly, uh, in that state. Hello and good morning. You're very much welcome, Dr. Abbas. Thank it's you wonderful very much. to have you in the studio. Thank you very much for having me. Well, very quickly, let's uh, get down to business. Yeah. Firstly, I want to make two comparisons. The CNG conversion situation in the country at the moment mm. that involves gas. Yeah. Cooking gas that people use every day in their houses. Mm. Which one of these two do you think is the most dangerous when it comes to explosions or the most likely to cause an explosion? Well, um, before I answer this question, we have to take two scenarios as well. Um, it all depends on where it happens. Okay. Uh, if a cooking gas is happening in just in a kitchen where yes. there are no population, yes. uh, so it is less uh, the, the, the less disastrous than the one that will happen in a very large community. And if a CNG can happen in Wuse Market, maybe somebody went there to display how they installed the, uh, the, the CNG gas and whatever and it exploded. Yes. Definitely it's going to affect more. more but when it comes to a real situation, the cooking gas is more dangerous than the CNG gas. But all of them are using uh, gas anyway. Uh, but it's just the situation that you find yourself. Yeah. All right, all right. You, you you have you have captured it very beautifully. But mm. um, with the CNG, uh, it's a new innovation, mm. especially in the country. Mm. Uh, it's just now that more and more people are beginning to know. Oh, they can convert their mm. vehicles to mm. CNG. I had a guest here yesterday who mentioned that it took him four whole months to mm. be able to convert his vehicle from mm. fuel uh, consumption to CNG consumption. Mm. A lot of people are torn in between, oh, CNG isn't as dangerous as people make it seem. Yes, it's a gas cylinder in your car, but it's not going to explode just because of heat. While other people are saying, it's like keeping a cooking gas cylinder in your car and driving around with it. It could explode at any time. Now that people are watching, I want you to enlighten us on the CNG gas. How safe is it for vehicles? Honestly, as far as I'm concerned, it's not safe. Uh, uh, we're too much in a rush and probably because we found ourselves in a situation whereby our uh, foil is becoming very expensive people are looking for alternative irrespective of the consequences uh, why do we have to go into conversion why do we why can't we order a, a, a factory fitted um, um, uh, CNG uh, uh, instead cars, of, instead, instead, of, instead, manually instead of manually converting if you are you have a car that doesn't have a tinted glass and you want to fix it definitely you see the defects there and even the police can easily detect that this is not a factory fitted yes. uh, tinted glass yes. so uh, the issue is that we are too much in a rush and there is no scientific evidence to show that this gas that we're putting in the boot is not going to explode because of the excessive heat that we are witnessing. Mind you, we are we are moving every day gradually into a climate change situation. Yes. And the heat is overwhelming. Uh, right now, if you go out, the temperature is so high. And then, just like you mentioned, you just keep a cooking gas in the in, in your in your, uh, in your, in your boat, yes. and then you leave it for too long. It can explode. So our own, we are just using uh, common sense to 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 a peripheral to put, knowledge, uh, a peripheral of, knowledge what, of what can uh, the, reduce uh, the economic uh, uh, consequences over the the the, the so life the of the citizens, hazard. safety hazard that we we, we witness. Yes. So as far as I'm concerned, definitely it is not a safe situation for us. To start all these things what we need to do is to take life easy and then make sure that if we want cng we should order cng uh, uh, vehicles into the country factory fitted tested and okay by experts but not in a situation whereby now everybody will now move to abuja lagos port or cng conversion, or CNG conversion. It, it, it's quite unfortunate because in other climes of the world you'd find people turning their attention towards EVs, electric vehicles. Yes. And in these countries, of course, they don't necessarily go through the same hassle of, uh, of epileptic power supply that we have always known in Nigeria, yeah, yeah. where Opnepa or Nepa Nepa, is now, yes. is now a, a, household name. a household name in yes. the country. Yes. Do you think that perhaps if the government had channeled in so much energy into ensuring that there is stable power supply, they are, they are electric vehicle charging ports across the country 
and pushed the importation of electric vehicles instead of the conversion of CNG gases, it would have been a more viable and a more sustainable Absolutely. and safe Absolutely. Means of transportation Absolutely. For Absolutely. You see, the problem we are having in this country is that we don't value lives. I'm sorry to say, we don't really value life. And that is why all, every incident we lost life. The only thing that we talk about, if one plane crash and kill one person, it's going to be all over the news. But every day, on daily basis, as I'm talking to you, there are hundreds and thousands of news that those who had road crashes, that we are not aware of it. Yes. So, the, instead of us to really put uh, the, the, all the um, uh, necessary things in place, we must make sure that our energy situation is perfect. Yes. If you do that, you don't have to call any investor to this country to come and put anything that has to do with energy. But now, in this situation, you cannot be able to call even a, 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 a assembly plant to come and manufacture or assemble a CNG uh, vehicles in Nigeria or electrical vehicles in Nigeria. Yes. So why don't we face the reality first thing first? Let's target this instead of subjecting our lives to unnecessary death. Uh, avoidable death. Yes. So if we do that, our, our we, attention we, should be more should on, be on, on electric, uh, vehicles. electric vehicles and ensure that we have enough energy that can serve. But now we are battling. About 15 states in the northern Nigeria are, have been without light for over 10 days yes. now. And we are not saying anything. We are not doing anything. Even if they have light, we are only managing 5,000 megawatts. So and now we are trying to bring in electrical vehicles uh, and then CNG conversion. All this will not help us. Let us target, have a plan and target what we want gradually. And there should be continuity. It's not in a situation whereby after this government, another government will come and, and jettison us, abandon and start and, and definitely definitely is going to be because it is interest our own interest we are only serving not the national interest and what happens to people who have converted their vehicles to then it is their own problem where to service them is also going to be a problem That's but a in developed but in developed countries it has come to stay yes. because they have studied it and they have already put all the infrastructures there that, so that even after the last span of that is is going to be sustained but in our own case, it is just a policy statement somebody can make, and then it will now be done. And after a, a while, three, uh, four, eight years maximum, everything is abandoned, and then we start all over again. Yeah, so yeah. we must have a national plan and must have. Doctor Abbas, you mentioned something about uh, the power situation in the northern part of the country, where for about ten days now yes. there has been power outage. Yeah. Now, mind you, before this, uh, there was a national great collapse yes. that affected the entire country and of yeah. course other parts of the country regained their electricity and except uh, the northern parts of the country mm. how much has this affected businesses especially uh, small and medium scale businesses who operate mainly dependent on the power supply that they get in a day and of course complemented by the little generators that they have to power yeah i was i was discussing this issue with a friend I told him, look at it. We are only talking about the national grid has collapsed. What is the consequences on the economy of the country? We are talking about uh, upgrading and building our GDPs. How do we build our GDPs? The small scale industries, the Mesuya, uh, uh, whatever along the yes, roadside, the they contributed. The, the tailors, the, the the, uh, all of them, they have contributed to the. They contribute to the, the, the development of the GDP in the country they pay tax. because they pay tax, and then they also contribute to the activities, economic activities of the country. Yes. But we have you ever hear anybody talking about the losses? or that was caused by the national grid. Even when the minister was inaugurating a committee to investigate those uh, failures and whatever, has he mentioned economic aspects? Instead, the, the mentions were more focused on huge manufacturing. That is all. And, and that rest. is all. That is all. And we need to consider those small-scale industries in the villages, the barbers and whatever. Those ones are really adding value to the economy. Yes. And then they contribute a lot towards that. But I think their own target is only to show... Uh, those on ban A who have lost electricity and that is all. And those ban A, most of them, they are not productive. 
Most of them, they are not productive because if you go, there are GRAs and whatever where they, they have those things. In fact, to go there and sell bread is a problem. They block their gate. Nobody can yes. take bread to that side because they go to superstores and buy their bread or they order and they deliver to them. So we need to take the small, the micro aspect before we get to the macro side of the economy. So, so somebody was saying something earlier just before you came into the studio, uh, Mr. Odema Abasi from our Uyo studio. He mm. was uh, hinting on the fact that those who make policies for the country or policies about the masses or the common man are not really common men. They are not. So they do not really understand where the shoe pinches to the common man because they do not wear the common man's shoes. But even the policies, the way, what is the objective of the policy? You and look and, at the and a lot of time, people like like former Vice President Elijah Tiko Abubakar have reiterated the fact that President Bola Metinibu's policies are somewhat an, an anti-people policy. Absolutely. What are your thoughts? Well, uh, I, I think like, that is why I'm saying before you come up with a policy, there must be an objective. What do you want to achieve with that policy? Who are the target uh, people that you are targeting what type of what type of people in the society we are over 200 million now in the society the the, the young the youth are the uh, are, are too much yes. there are too many in in that population what is the target if you are coming up with a youth policy youth uh, 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 policy what what do you want to achieve do you want to achieve out of school children policy or what now this is the major problem that we we are we are having if we can address that i think the nigeria will be pros uh, will prosper because out of school children is a time bomb for this country whether we like it or not and uh, as if you think you look at them as dolls these are the people that we are having in the in, in the bush who are coming out to as, the mail road as, as and then kidnapping you would look at them as if they don't know how to wear clothes. They don't know. Now they are operating AK-47 and then they come to the road and go to negligence of the government. And our policies are not targeted towards solving the problems that we'll, uh, we'll, we, we, are, we are really having and we, or we are foreseeing. The issue here is that people will come up with policies without scientific evidence. And if you come up with a policy without scientific evidence, definitely you will learn into a disaster. You won't be able to make a, 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 a pronounced uh, policy that will be sustained uh, by any government yes. and then that will also help the economy to grow. So all what we are doing now, we are going to buy arms. What is the target? We bought, we bought aeroplanes for, for fighters last government. Yes. Why are they not fighting the bandits? Have we heard about them? Well, well, well we, we are digressing a little bit, but, but I just want you to comment on the arms of the fighter jets before we get back to the gas explosion yes, conversation. Yes. Yes. Now, here this morning, I saw that uh, the Federal Executive Council yesterday yes. okayed um, 443, uh, 443.3 million euros and $141 million dollars for six M346 fighter aircrafts and ammunition for the Nigerian military in the fight against banditry and insurgency in the country. Uh, these are humongous figures. Yes, the insecurity is there, but are we channeling these funds towards the right cause in the country? Did we review what happened last in that government when we bought uh, 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 fighter jets also? to fight the bandits. How many bandits do I we able to? Did, did, we, did we really uh, solve the problem of one city or one village in terms of banditry in the Northwest since the when we bought this? Still ramping. But the is still rampant and, and it's coming out to pub, uh, publicly to challenge yes. the government yes. with AK-47 and we are buying jet fighters. Well, and then we did not even um, uh, 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 review what really happened last year, like I yes. said, last regime? What was the cause? Why didn't we get it right last time? And how are we sure that with this situation, yes. we are going to get it right? What is our target? That is talking about the objectives. So if you don't have object objectives, definitely you will not be able to, to target and achieve your goals uh, as it is. Oh. And that is why a project is being abandoned. If you go to the uh, uh, military bases, you see abandoned aeroplanes, abandoned arm armaments, all those because they were not t tested, they were not 
targeted. There were not there was no scientific review to see that this is what we want and that is going to hit the target. All, all right, Dr. Abbas, now that we are done with the policies uh, that <laughs> you wanted to touch on, let's get back to uh, explosions yes, in the country now. Yeah. Uh, we, we have been talking about gas, but let's revisit Jigawa State, yeah. where a tanker inferno claimed the lives of about 153 somewhat people. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, uh, about 70 people survived the ordeal with uh, bone marks on their bodies and are recuperating in the hospital. Yeah. When that tanker fell, one of the things that from videos I've watched that caused the inferno was the fact that people went and were scooping food. Oil. In such situations, what should have been the first point of call? Well, uh, it's very unfortunate that we had that incident, and we have been having a series of that. Before then, we had it in Niger State, we had it, we've been having it in Lagos, we had it in Enugu, and, and if you take back the statistics, we've been having it uh, almost on quarterly basis. Uh, but what have been the reaction of the government yes. and the people? Uh, I, I want to base this uh, uh, into uh, categorizing into about four or five factors. First, there is environmental factor, there are human factors, there are mechanical factors, yes. then there are also uh, um, um, uh, 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 technical, uh, and then we have also legislation and enforcement. Okay, this let's are, take them one the, the, yes, the other. These are, okay, if we take the, the uh, human factors, first and foremost, uh, Corruption comes in, yes. as well as lack of respect for life. Uh, in most cases, we don't respect our lives. Yes. And, and, and that is why we subject it to unnecessary uh, situations, whatever. Do you know uh, that uh, those tankers, articulated vehicles, they go in to check. There are safety protocols where you take in those uh, uh, PMS or whatever uh, to come out with. Yes. And the standard the kind of standard the vehicle must be. But you know because of our corruption and you know because of lack of respect for human lives, mm -hmm. you go in with a well-tested and, and, and articulated vehicle to meet up with the requirements within the, 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 the farmhouse or whatever and, and then take the products. When you take the products, you go and discharge it to a recitering vehicle, maybe along a papa, Yes. Expressway. Yes. Then that recitering vehicle will now convey the product from Lagos to Meruguri. It's expected to transport it to, to Meruguri. And then you Would take I, back the, and the, the, the brand new and, truck and the brand to, the, to, to, get to, to get more. Interesting. So you can see where corruption comes in yes. and lack of respect for human lives. And that is why we are, this is the major thing that is causing problem. And then you, when you, along the road, you now come up with a link up with the mechanical factor. Because already the, the, the vehicle, the, the articulated vehicle has a lot of issues and it will be driving. And then you would bring another human factor there also. Once you are 18, the Federal Safety Corps will give you license. The, li the license can, it's, it's just an open ended, you can even drive a, an aeroplane if it can work on the road. road. <laughs> you can drive. So there are, there are no agency that will certify you before you get into the articulated vehicle. And not only that articulated vehicle, that articulated vehicle that carry inflammable products like PMS. Yes. So no, there is no agency for safety that would do that. And then in most cases, it's not the main driver that even drives the, 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 the vehicle. It is his own boy. He will be sleeping. Like the Jigawa case, it, was, it happened in the night. Most likely, the main driver was sleeping. He just gave his boy to drive. Who, because, who was reckless about Who it. was re reckless and he doesn't even know. Apart from putting gear, as, as long as it will move, he doesn't care. And when he's feeling sleepy, instead of him to tell the boss that he's going to uh, park he and sleep, he will keep driving. And that could have been the reason why they had that accident. So, and then uh, uh, it is expected to also move from the distance, yes. from Lagos to Meruguri. That particular uh, very, uh, the truck was going to Nguru in Yobe State, and it left Lagos. That's very close so, to Borno. Again, close to Borno. Yes. And again, uh, our roads are very bad yes. also. So, and then the weather, we don't also consider that. And uh, with the climate change, definitely we have to change our attitude. 
you don't drive when the weather is foggy or whatever. But we go ahead to drive, irrespective, as long as you can, you can see a little uh, on your way, you can just drive. Yes. So that is also causing a lot of troubles and in, in terms accidents, of explosions in terms of, of explosion. And like immediately you, 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 you crash, definitely because of the impact, uh, there could be fire incident. And so subsequently an explosion. Subsequently an explosion. Yeah. And then our roads are just shallow. There is nothing like paramedics, there is nothing like medical uh, uh, apparatus, there is nothing or, like... Or there an is emergency nothing, ambulance there is no emergency ambulance, islands. no responders from, uh, from if you leave Kano to, to, to Jigawa, no, you can't I, see I any I was responder. having a conversation with someone recently and, and they told me that the time response in a place like the US for emergencies, anywhere you are is 10 minutes. Whether you are in the middle of the expressway and you dial 911, in 10 minutes, there is a police van or an ambulance with you. Why do they have that? Because they have already planned. If you are driving from uh, 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 Washington to New York, yes. which is a distance, you will find out that in all 100 uh, uh, kilometers, you find a rest house yes. whereby you can stop, and you can take a shower, you can rest, and then continue with your journey. Yes. And then they have radar. Every vehicle is being monitored. Every vehicle. And then all the responders are nearby on the road. They have camps. As they are building roads, they are building camps. Why can't we do that? For responders. For responders. So now the fire service was not there when that articulated vehicle had an accident. They were not there. They came after 100, over 100 people had already died. And uh, 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 under a normal situation, you say you die 911. In Nigeria here, 112 is our emergency number. Most people don't Most know Most people it. don't know it. We have not even uh, popularized the number. Now, 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 that is where perhaps the National Orientation Agency can be faulted Absol in all of this situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, the, the, in fact, not even the national population, that is why I'm telling you that uh, we, we, we pursue some policies that are not really they are meaningless to the nation yes. if national communication commission has built 911 exchanges are they going to manage the 911 exchange for the country mm -hmm. what if there was a plan there was really a plan and there was an objective to do that it should be handed over to maybe another agency that would really take care of it if it is going to be National Orientation Agency, it should be handed over to the National Orientation Agency. If it is going to be another agency, let it be, but not to be domiciled in the National Communication Commission just because they have built it. They, they, release, they, can, even, they can even leave it with the uh, network providers yeah. because they are the owners of the 112. They provide network. Irrespective of where, wherever you are, it can go into any network and connect you. So they can give them to, to manage it and then educate the people. So lack of education is one of the problems that we are having also. Those people living along the main road should be educated that these are the things that you should avoid. If a tanker falls, if a tanker falls avoid it, avoid avoid it as and run away as, as, possible. as possible and report it. Okay. This is how you are going to report it. Call 112 immediately. But, but, and then there will another, be... Another thing, uh, Dr. Abbas, mm. is uh, poverty. Mm. Poverty in the land, where people are grappling and struggling to buy fuel for over 1,000 naira per litre. Cooking gas is almost unaffordable to yeah. the common man now. Yeah. Everybody is resorting to, to, charcoal. To, to charcoal and firewood, yes. which also doesn't come as cheap as God. <laughs> at least it is manageable. Yes. Now, when people see the opportunity of a truck that has fallen and they see that petrol is just you know pouring out, it's almost like an avenue for them to fetch this petrol, sell it off, and make some money. Yeah. So is I it, agree with you. How do we tackle this? Yes, poverty is the major cause of this because um, uh, people are looking at it as a na sharing a national cake yes, yes. and they have gotten it. And uh, this is uh, foil, foil is beyond the reach of a common man. So they now go ahead and, and scoop it, but they don't know the consequences. And that is the reason why a lot, government needs to do a lot. The nitty gritty of life. We, we, we neglect them and we have to go back to the grassroots. We must educate our people. 
let them understand. Before you enforce, you put a policy, you must educate people to know that this is the consequences. This is what they should do and this is what they should avoid. In disaster management, you have to do pre-disaster, during the disaster and after the disaster. You have to inform people. If you do this, you are going to avoid disaster. And that is why early warning is coming. Yes. And in each situation of disaster, early warning comes first. And if there is no early response, then we are, you are going, you have already, you are into it. So no disaster occur without early warning. Your car cannot crash without giving you sign. sign. Yes. Nothing, except you neglect it. So therefore, that is an early warning for you. What you're supposed to do, early respond. Respond to it, pack, and then before you sleep, you start dozing. So that, that, that's correct. That's an early warning for you. Those for a, for a number it, of minutes exactly, or seconds. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So pack and sleep. That is how it should be, and that is why in developed countries they have the that rest room, so the rest house where you can pack and and sleep. So in our own situation, we just go into venture into it yes. without anything and abandon the road for river, and that is all. Kaduna Abuja Road, we can build such things and make sure that uh, we I maintain mean, it, them. It's just a short distance. It's just a short distance, and and as we are doing, build, let's build it into the our own uh, into the budget of the um, uh, construction construction yes. as you are constructing this is what we want uh, as we want you to put this covered we also want you to put this house and they equip it but then again sometimes it's not just about building it's not just about maintenance. providing the infrastructure maintenance, maintenance is another issue but we also have to do the maintenance we must do it as on the part of the government yes now. on the part of the government we must do it if we can maintain the road we have to maintain those uh, centers, those camps also, to ensure that we do it. Look, we have to start really uh, punishing people. It, it, it appears yeah, that, you th yes, carry on. You see, if, for instance, uh, Minister of Works comes to tell us, uh, to tell the government that uh, uh, we want to do this, you have to tell us what you have done, and that is why the National Assembly have an oversight function. They have to go and look at those facilities. Are they really functioning? If they are not functioning, don't give them For money. emergency purposes. Exactly, don't give them money. But you, you just sit down, you sign paper, they say, I, I well maintain. Nothing is there. When you get there, you can't be able to, 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 to get into that place. And then you give them money again this year. And next year, and that is what is happening so to our dams. A, a reputation of exactly. vicious circle. Exactly. Now, let, let, let's still talk about um, trucks, especially, uh, you know, artillery vehicles that uh, convey... Uh, goods and services from one point to another in the country yeah. or like in the case of Dangote trucks now that convey cement mm -hmm. and the rest. Mm -hmm. Most of these trucks, if you look at them closely, mm -hmm. you'd find a box-like item just behind the actual car mm -hmm. before the trailer yes, itself. Yes, Those are CNG. The CNG, yes, yes, yes. You mentioned that CNG isn't as safe as many people would want to be. Exactly, noticed. exactly. And along the airport road, if you drive, if you're driving towards the airport on the left, you'd find an array of these long vehicles stretched out. Yes. Trying to buy CNG. Gas. Yes. Yes. How much of a hazard is this posing for Nigerians flying Nigerian roads? Yes. Like I said, um, if it is not a factory fitted, yes. we are really trading in a, a very bad situation that uh, we are risking our lives. And uh, that will not save us. If we want to save uh, our cost yes. and then mortgage our lives. It, 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 it's a penny wise pound, pound foolish. foolish. So what we need to do is to, to do the right thing. And uh, if you, you just go there and fix a CNG buses, I mean CNG uh, cylinders to your vehicle in order to save it the cost, at the end of the day, it is going to cost a lot of money. And if we discover that uh, your vehicle had a crash and as a result of that, it cost the loss of lives. The government should be able to take uh, responsibility and ensure and, that and, they punish and, 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 and punish. probably made out the exact exactly, punishments that exactly. they are supposed to. Exactly. Because we don't punish yes. people. The government does not. They forget about things and then do. What, now, is there anything that we are doing to find out what was the cause of uh, the loss of well, over 180 lives. Still, in, some in, people in, are in on the pipeline because they are still uh, receiving treatment in the hospital. And, and one tanker has cost the life of those people. And we are now uh, as if we are celebrating 
Nobody is talking about who does this I mean, and who does not, not this, do this. This is not going to be considered a natural disaster now, is it? What is it? It, it, it it's it's a, a a case of uh perhaps somebody caused it, so it's not natural. So if somebody caused it is it's a human induced. So why are we not going after the person? It's human induced. Why why is that is why isn't the state government itself that is what I'm saying, saying anything about it? It's a case. Even 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 if you you go to court and challenge the owner of the of the vehicle, then he will not be able to maintain his vehicle. All of them will be in their senses, they will be maintaining their vehicles and then they will be certifying their drivers to be well trained and then careful on the road. But everything is gone. The government is even injecting money that they are, they are, they are paying the medical bills. They are paying, they are giving the families uh, uh, to 200,000 each, the, the families of the disease. As palliative, what for? And then you allow that guy to go scot free. Then tomorrow another uh, tanker will come and explode. You will not stop. Instead, use this money to educate your people. Educate them that this is not what you, you're supposed to be doing. The National Orientation Agency is there. The states refuse to create a similar uh, institution like the National Orientation Agency so that they can collaborate with the National Orientation Agency and be educating the people. We have so many things to educate our public and keep them. By the time we give them the education, definitely our economy will boom. All right. Well, it's just as much as uh, uh, Dr. Abbas Idris has mentioned. There is a whole lot to do in terms of educating our people uh, against the hazards of uh, the incidents or incidents like the one that happened in Jigawa where a tanker fell and people went uh, to scoop petrol from uh, the leaking tanker. Uh, you should ensure that if any such occurrences take place, run away as far as possible uh, from the scene of the accident and reach out to emergency management agencies to tackle the issue very, very appropriately. Now, still staying with discussions around uh, gas, uh, Dr. Abbas, let's talk about cooking gas now in our households. Mm. Uh, there have been several reports of explosions, gas explosions, horrifying gas explosions uh, in households where some people unfortunately don't survive while the ones that do survive end up with scars for the rest of their lives and trauma. Because I know of somebody who would not dare go near a gas cylinder right now due to the trauma of an explosion in her house that claimed the life of someone. Mm -hmm. yep. What is the safest way of ensuring that, yes, gas cylinders should be in the house, but where should they be? Well, um... Thank God I, I chaired a ministerial committee when I was in the office yes. uh, on gas explosion. When it happened, if you could recall, it happened in, in Nasarawa State, uh, where but so many people lost their lives. And so we, we were asked to go and study and undertake a study of the causes and the consequences that happened. And we came and to, to implement it in the FCT. Yes. And uh, it was very, very... Uh, disastrous. Yes. Uh, gas cylinders are more dangerous than anything you can think about. Mm. And that is why the best position for the gas cylinder should be outside the kitchen. In fact, uh, we're even recommending that uh, even when it is outside the kitchen, you should make a hole and, and, bury, and then it in bury it in, in there and then so that it will now have, uh, so that the, the 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 wisdom there is that you can be able to use a fire blanket and to cover, uh, it. To cover it and ensure that it doesn't uh, make anything. Uh, and and if you go in, if you allow it in the kitchen, once it started leaking, and 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 you put a flame, the whole house will be on fire. And those people in the kitchen definitely is a sorry situation for them. And you know the impact of that the gas. Once the gas is in, in the air as you are moving with your motorbike is going to enter and it will get you yes. the messiah may go say on the road it, it will go be into his uh, into her own yes. uh, 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 cooking uh, distance so it's it's very very highly very be because dangerous you, the, it's it's it, a gas so it, it can't just exactly. be contained it as long as it leaks it's uh, it, everywhere it, it cannot and the situation we are in especially in major cities that we we live is that uh, you just come in in the morning and you see somebody erecting a structure, putting, selling gas, cooking gas in front of your uh, fence, and we allow them. Well, well, That's well, the it, it, it's, it's quite we, a very common sight, especially even here in the FCC. We have carried out a study 
and we went to DPR then and to get even those who were licensed to sell gas, cooking uh, gas, yes. and identify the legitimate locations and those illegitimate locations, and we submitted our reports to, 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 to the government, but nothing has been done. And we are doing this proactively to save lives and properties of the citizens of uh, the FCT. Uh, and, and, and if we don't do it, that is why we are always reactive instead of being proactive. proactive. And what we have done was proactively okay. We have carried out the study. We were able to identify. We went to development control, yes. got all approvals, and we went to filling, even filling stations, those who are selling, who are having gas stations. They are selling gases. They have not met the requirement of either the fire service or the uh, DPR or the development but control. They, were they have given approval. They, they are there. In fact, when you get that with your cylinder, you are not supposed to, to get near there. Somebody who is trained, who is also kitted Picks it with, from you. Kitted with oh. fireproof uh, 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 gadgets yes. with them, is the one to come and collect your cylinder, test it, and then go and refill it and bring it out for you. But when you go to gas station, you see that people entering in and out. And you come and park with your vehicle, you carry your cylinder, go in. Those people are not certified. They are just there because they need job. The, 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 the station manager gave them job and they do whatever they do. And it is very dangerous. Well, well in, in, in finding alternatives, especially to cooking gas, I know the topic of energy is a very broad one. Mm. And um, the most common type of energy that Nigerians use to cook is the cooking gas. Yes. But are there other alternatives, sustainable alternatives to explore rather than just these uh, uh, LNG gases that, you know, people use that Nig that could be accessible to ordinary Nigerians and affordable as well? It, that's none. There's none because we have not developed our energy sector yet and uh, we have no option. And if you look at the way we do it, we do it manually. Developed countries, they pipe everything. Yes. You, will not, you will not even see it. You only it see just it comes into, just your, comes your, into kitchen. your kitchen and they charge you for that. Yes. And you don't keep the cylinders and whatever even. So it comes directly from the supplier into your kitchen. As you open it, it's just like you are opening a tap of water coming from water board. Yeah. So uh, we have not developed that sector yet. And that is why there is agitation that we should do that. And uh, with the climate change also, we must do it so that we can save our, uh, our trees. Now all the trees are being cut down and we don't plant any other one. And we go ahead to say, don't do this because of climate change. So we are contradicting ourselves. Gas keep arising. This week, the, the, the per kilo of gas has gone uh, high, irrespective of the fact that uh, the government announced that they are removing VAT from the gas, uh, quitting gas. Uh, I mean, it, it currently stands at about 6,699 naira per 5 kilograms. So if you have a 5 kg cylinder, so. it will cost you almost 7,000 naira to fill it up. So, And, and if you are talking about... Uh, kerosene. Kerosene now sells at 1,717 naira per liter, even more expensive more than expensive petrol. More expensive than petrol. So we, we, have, we have no alternative. The only alternative for a common man is charcoal. And even charcoal cannot, you which cannot is, even which afford Which is not sustainable because which is you have to cut down trees. You have to cut down trees and you are causing another problem for yourself. It's a roller coaster. Because of the, because it, of the it, climate change. It's just a circle, a vicious exactly. circle. Exactly. And then when you go back to National Assembly, we make budget for climate change. That we are fighting climate change. What are you doing? But but let let's 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 leave the government aside now. I know sometimes uh, people would want to always point fingers at the national assembly, at the federal government, or the state governments in terms of implementation of some of these things. Let's talk about the common man who is at the epicenter of the economic situation in the country. Mm. What is the role of the common man in ensuring that yes, prices of cooking gas is uh, expensive, kerosene is expensive. Charcoal and and uh, and uh, firewood. firewood is not as Expense. sustainable mm. as it should be. What is the position of the common man, and what role has the common man got to play? Let me tell this? you, there is no way we can we can uh, excuse government in this situation. Yes, when you are building a nation, there must be stringent measures, and that is what the government is telling us to enjoy. That they are building an economy that is going to be sustainable. And if you are building an economy that is going to be sustainable, there must be laws 
and regulations that must be respected. Now, if you leave the studio and go out and find out that the, the, the pump price of petroleum has changed, what will you do? I would certainly be, be this... Uh, You'll still buy. I, I will still buy, but still I will buy. be unhappy but, about but buying. You will be unhappy, but does it change the government? The government has a target, and they are making it. So if really, that is why I say we must have an objective of a policy. If the objective is to make this nation greater in a near future, we don't have to be merciful to a common man. Common man will respect it. And the common man does definitely will not do anything if you don't force him to do it. If you don't force it, if you are selling, if you are selling uh, uh, cooking gas one naira today per kilo, the common man somewhere will tell you that he prefers to cook with firewood because it can cook the food very much than cooking and, with and the fire the, gas. And the smell of the, and the, smell of the food sweeter. Good, good. <laughs> so he will. So government must come in and yes. enforce it, must come with regulations yes. and ensure that definitely people, the citizens obey. That is the essence of government. And the, the followership must obey government as long as those policies are good, either now or in the future. We have to make sacrifices. Dr. Thomas, there's an interesting story here uh, where uh, it says from with effect from November 1st, 2024, NNPCL and LPG producers are to stop exporting LPG produced in the country or export equivalent volumes of LPG exported at cost reflective prices. Mm. This is just in a few days. Okay. Uh, this decision, I believe, is... Uh, if. It, it, yes, if it, it if. will be... <laughs> What, what, how do how would you react? To yeah, this? if they they are going to do that, yes. that would be better for the country. In 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 what way? In a situation whereby there would be it's, it's an issue of demand and supply. Now, then the supply the supply is going to be much in the society in the, in the community whereby the, it will crash the prices. Yes. Now, why we are having problem is that uh, the the demand is higher than, than the, the supply. supply. So if you stop exporting, and then you will now have it sold in the country nigeria is an oil and gas producing country yes a crude producing country yes. and from crude you get a lot of products yes why are we mostly fixated on pms more than any other thing well uh, i think even pms because it becomes necessary that we should do it that is the reason why i'm saying i'm talking still about objective yes what do we do why do we what do we want to oh, achieve right, as I'm, a I'm, nation I'm what what do we want to achieve as a nation if we have crude oil, yes. we have refined products that we br we bring. Now we have Dangote refinery refining there. We have other refineries that are supposed to, to do that. What is our obje objective in energy sector? If we have a very good objective, all the refineries must be working. Yes. If the refineries are working, we have refined products available. It will crash the, the price of, of PMS and whatever products that we're getting out of petroleum, products, petroleum we get. products we get. So a, a gas and whatever is going to be cheaper for, for our usage. And then other products that will come in, the, which, are, which is the byproducts of this crude oil and uh, refined products and whatever, Vaseline and whatever, uh, cream, uh, uh, me jet medicament, and jet foil and whatever. All this will just, people will not put their eyes on it. And, and you see that the economy will just be booming, activities will, be, will take place, and everybody, banditry, this insecurity is going to be over. It's going to be over. Yes. So we need to have a very well pronounced uh, uh, programs and 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 and, uh, and and policies that will promote the development of our economy. But if we just take one aspect and neglect others, it is not going to work for us. Uh, now, if we rely on Dangote uh, uh, refinery, who is having uh, uh, creating different market for himself now. In, not only in Africa, in the whole world. So other refineries are not going to. And we should also license the modular refineries who can be really having, in each state, we should have a modular refinery. To, that to, is to a, sort of to com set up complement exactly, the efforts of the NNPC. Exactly. So that you don't wait for NNPC to supply foil to filling station in, in a state before you get foil. Or not what refinery. So, or not what to do so. So if you do that, 
definitely we will now boost the economy and then we get it right. Well, well Dr. Abbas, we have just about five minutes to wrap up our conversation here. Mm. Um, let's talk about emergency response in situations of gas explosion. Mm. Recently in the Durumi area of uh, Gudu district, mm -hmm. uh, we got reports of a gas explosion that, you know, it, although it didn't claim the life, the life of anybody, but a lot of houses were affected yeah. from one gas explosion. Several houses uh, were no, burned. In situations like this, well, I might also add that at the time when the road, um, fire service truck got yeah. to the spot mm. to quench the fire, neighborhood people had already done that. Mm. And then they chased away the truck, stoning it and all. How do we ensure that we balance all of these things up, that everybody knows their role and acts accordingly? You see... We must get all the stakeholders on hand to, yes. to ensure that um, uh, we, we really uh, have the responsibilities and we know our responsibilities. Yes. Um, uh, there is what we call um, the response plan. And the response plan is a document that's supposed to be signed by all the stakeholders, uh, uh, the National Orientation Agency, all the, including media, and everybody must have his own or her own role. Uh, I would agree with you. We have had situation whereby we respond to a fire incident, and our our vehicle vandalized, but the, the the firemen beaten and whatever. The problem we are having is that lack of education and uh, sensitization. Uh, people doesn't know when to call the responders. Yes. Immediately it happens. Call call one one two. When you call 112, the response time within the FCT, I'm, I'm telling you, up to this moment, even as I left the office, is five minutes. Anywhere Whatever, you are. Anywhere you are, if you can call immediately. Now, what, and what, what, what happens that, what causes the delay in most cases? The problem is because people feel they can do it. And when they and they are not trained. And when they, they can't, not, when they they can, that is when they start calling. Not even them within. It is a passerby that will now call us and say, look, I have seen a smoke there as if fire is happening in one house or this, then they will go. By the time they get there, then the mob will now at start attacking them. Yeah. But meanwhile, and fire fighting is not like anything. By the time this room is in fire, you are not expected to break any glass. You are not expected to open the door. You, in fact, if there is a window open, we ask you to close the window. The fire will be contained in this room. It will not get to that room. But by the time you open up, and when they come, they come with stick, they come with everything, break all the glasses, open They're all the doors. In fact, fire. even opening the roof, yes. because they will, they, will, they will use water, they will use sand to do. By the time you are doing that, you are escalating. You are, you are, you are amplifying the fire. And then the fire will not be in one place. It will not jump to another place. Yes. So the, we, are, we need to educate the public to understand this. And, and except we give public education and sensitization. People should understand a common policy. Like I said, before a policy start, we start implementing policy, let's make sure that we get 90% of the people understanding the policy, how, it going to, how it's going to work. But if we just put it, we are going to, it's going to backfire. And that is exactly what is happening in the man, emergency management. Well, well, Dr. Idris, in just two minutes, um, you are an expert when it comes to disaster management. Mm. And uh, I just want you to send out a message to three categories of people. Okay. One, the federal government slash National Assembly yeah. that is saddled with the responsibility of policy making and all of that mm -hmm. in ensuring the safety mm -hmm. and better livelihood of Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Two, the first responders in cases of emergency. Mm -hmm. And three, the actual residents themselves who often find themselves in cases of emergencies. What are the roles of all this? Thank things? you very much. And, 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 and I want to do it this way. Like uh, I said, the government must take disaster management as a national policy. Yes. At the moment, they did not. They should take it as a national policy and monitor every aspect of it. An expert should man all the strategic agencies that are running, conducting uh, 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 disaster management, implementing policies. If you look at our flood situation, every year it's happening at the same point because there are no expertise touch in that aspect. So, and the government is not putting a policy that is going to be sustainable. We keep changing and then we move. Secondly, the first responders. Who are the first responders? Normally, 
the communities are the first responders. We must educate them. We must tell them these are the signs, these are the early warnings. When you see this, this is what you should do. And we make sure that we train them and we put them into that. And now, uh, even the, the most vulnerable those who are women and children and other things. And then we should also b b uh, build evacuation centers whereby people can be evacuated in terms of uh, a flood, not just to tell them to move to uh, a higher ground when there is no higher ground. Yes. So we have to build evacuation centers and move them. Then those people, immediately those who those that are, are victims or the population that are being affected, they are also the first responders. You as a first responder, if you have fire as a result of gas explosion, uh, or you have a cylinder that is leaking and fire erupted, uh, most kitchens, most women doesn't know what is even fire blanket. And in each kitchen, there must be a fire blanket that you can wrap up your cooking pot once that is flame and, and, it, and extinguishes. How many houses have extinguishers? Even in government houses, once you install them at the point of construction, no servicing. I went to somebody, a permanent secretary's office. I think I saw a, power, a fire ball uh, hang on the ceiling. Yes. I asked him, what is this? He said, he just moved into the office. Doesn't not, so no orientation. He was not oriented that this is a fireball. When there is fire, this is how it's going to be to be used. I asked him whether they have fire extinguisher. He said they are all installed. We went out. It has expired more than one year. Mm -hmm. Nothing has been done. And even when it is done, because of corruption, the right chemical is not even put there. So by the time you bring it out, you, you try to extinguish fire. It doesn't. Just a simple example on the road, if you will have fire extinguisher and you want to help, you will go there, you see, you, you spray it, it will not extinguish the fire because the powder is not a genuine powder. Or expired. Or expired. Well, so we, are, we only carry it, we show it to road safety, and that is what we pass. Well, well Dr. Abbas Idris, I must thank you so much. Uh, thank it's you been a very much. robust conversation, and uh, we look forward to having you again in the studio, maybe to talk about some other issues uh, regarding to emergency. In thank the you very much, TJK, for having me. Thank you. I'm grateful. Well, that has been Dr. Idris Abbas, who is an emergency management consultant here in the studio with us, uh, discussing gas explosions in the country and the role and responsibility of every single Nigerian in ensuring that this menace is curtailed and in cases of emergency, the right actions to be taken. Well, that's all time would permit us to take on this segment of Morning X.